Is gravity the force that keeps you on earth? Or is it the curvature of space-time that we traverse through? Or is it a sea of particles exchanged between objects in this universe? If you ask different people, you'll get different answers. As Isaac Newton said, the moon gravitates towards the earth and by the force of gravity is continually drawn off from a rectilinear motion and retained in its orbit. Physicist Archibald Wheeler summarized as Space-time tells matter how to move. Matter tells space-time how to curve. Physicist Frank Wilczek says that The graviton is the particle from which gravitational fields are made. Photons bind together atoms and molecules. Gluons bind together quarks, protons and atomic nuclei. Gravitons bind planets, stars, galaxies and big things in general. So what is gravity? Is it a force? Or is it a particle? Or is it the curvature of space-time? Today we are tackling this beast. And I won't assume that you are a physicist. I'll start from scratch. So let's get started. We dive in to understand the force perspective of gravity. And here comes the man. Isaac Newton, in his book Principia Mathematica, expounded the law of gravitation. He says that the force of gravity between two objects of mass m1 and m2 is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance r between them. In simple words, the force of gravity between two objects increases with the mass of the objects and decreases with the square of the distance between the two objects. With this simple yet profound law, Newton became the best physicist the world had ever seen. This law defines the very action of the earth on the moon, the sun on the earth and every other object on the other. Newton's law of gravitation laid the groundwork for our understanding of planetary motion, no longer needing the touch of a divine finger to line them. In another 200 years from Newton, physicists had figured out the other famous force of the time, electromagnetism, and physicists started thinking of the end of physics. Famous physicist Albert A. Michelson said, It seems probable that most of the grand underlying principles have been firmly established, and that further advances are to be sought chiefly in the rigorous application of these principles to all the phenomena which come under our notice. But physics had other plans. This is how much my life could have been simpler with just Newton's work of gravity. And this is after Mr. Einstein stepped in. Physics changed drastically. In just about 20 years after that quote of Michelson, the world was shaken. Einstein's theory of general relativity was a revision to Newton's law of gravitation. The equations look like this. These objects here are called tensors. You might have noticed, I call them Einstein's equations and not just equation as there are 10 equations hidden inside what's written above. One side of these equations is space-time and the other side is matter. Space-time tells matter how to move and matter tells space-time how to curve. Let's understand the why and the how. Why did we even need a new way to think about gravity? Well, there were many reasons, but I'd like to talk about one that seems the most easy to understand. Mercury's orbit. Newton's law predicted the Mercury's orbit to be like this. But the observations kept on suggesting this. The perspective of a force could not account for the anomaly. But Einstein's equations with a new understanding of curvature resolved this problem and the predictions of Einstein's theories were spot on. And how did it explain the force, the force of gravity? This is simple to understand when one looks at the following example. Consider two people, say Alice and Bob. They both decide to walk on Earth from the equator to the North Pole to see Northern Lights. Alice starts from Africa and Bob starts from South America. They make sure that they walk straight but with each passing moment, they realize that they are getting closer and closer. As if there was a force pulling them together. But in reality, it's the Earth that curves underneath them and brings their straight paths closer. This is the illusion of gravity.
Gravity appears to be a force pulling objects together when it is the space time around these objects that curves on which the objects move and gives the illusion of a force pulling them together. Objects keep on moving their straight paths, but those straight paths come closer due to the curvature of space time itself, and we feel a force bringing us closer. So while all this was happening, a new framework in physics was taking shape, the quantum theory. While people were still trying to understand the consequences of GR, the quantum theory had dominated our understanding of the universe. Out of the four known fundamental forces, it had explained three of them. And guess what remained? Gravity. Physicists had gained profound insights while understanding the other three forces through the quantum theory. And soon it was clear that if physics had to explain all phenomena in the universe, gravity had to have a quantum version. Enter gravitons. While still hypothetical, these are the particles that could make quantum version of gravity or quantum gravity for short. Quantum theories explain phenomena at the atomic level. So while the notion of curvature of space-time or the illusion of force of gravity around us would still remain true, a quantum theory of gravity would correctly describe how these macroscopic phenomena around us arise from the fundamental building blocks. To give you an intuitive sense of graviton, let's dive into a fun analogy. Imagine you're out surfing on the ocean, riding some waves. From afar, the waves may appear as smooth, thick sheet of water with gentle ups and downs. But if you could magically zoom in and peek at the water molecules, you'd see the individual H2O molecules, the building blocks of water creating those waves. Similarly, physicists theorize that they would see gravitons when zooming in to waves of space-time called gravitational waves. So the answer to the question of what gravity really is, is what I call the gravity hotel, which is something like this in my mind. There are many floors in this hotel, but the accommodation is allotted as per the visitor's mass. The hotel is held firmly into the ground of physics by the pillars of quantum gravity, gravitons. But we don't yet have the tools to dig in and see the pillars. The pillars are hidden, but they do exist. Lighter visitors like us can accommodate lower floors, where the hotel serves the illusion of a force. And the heavier, much more massive visitors like stars, planets and black holes can accommodate the top floor where the balconies show the true scope of physics through curvature. I hope you enjoyed this video on what is gravity and I hope now you have a better understanding of this mysterious beast. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell button for more similar content. Also in your comments, do let me know if this video helped you to gain a better perspective and a better understanding of gravity. Until next time, signing off your host Madhur. Keep exploring and stay curious.